Over the past few months, China's crackdowns on its tech giants have led many investors to doubt the future of Chinese stocks. Kathy Wood recently sold almost all of ARK's Chinese holdings, and many have done the same too. Amidst the negative sentiment, Ray Dalio believes that everyone is making a huge mistake. Dalio is the founder and CIO of the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates. He believes that almost all Westerners have completely misunderstood China's recent moves. This video will go in-depth on why Dalio is betting big on China's future, and why he thinks everyone is entirely wrong on China's latest policies. Welcome to Kazian's Academy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this, and let's get right into it. Ray Dalio is not like a typical fund manager in the way he manages money. Everyone knows about the idea of high risk and high reward. In the stock market, if you take on more perceived risk, then your potential reward increases. While that sounds logical, Dalio doesn't see it that way. Unlike other fund managers, he focuses on low risk and high reward. This is called the peer alpha strategy. Investing in more volatile assets can lead to extreme upwards and downwards swings. The typical retail investor might be fine with that. But Dalio focuses on high net worth clients that are often risk averse. One statistic named Alpha takes risk into consideration. Alpha is a number that represents someone's risk adjusted return, which is calculated by taking an investor's return and subtracting it by the portfolio's volatility. Dalio focuses purely on Alpha by generating the highest return with the lowest volatility. To do this, he uses investments that counteract each other to lower overall volatility while still keeping high expected returns. One of Dalio's most famous funds is the all-weather portfolio, which has consistently generated high returns with low volatility. His pure alpha fund has also generated impressive returns, despite having little to no significant downturns. The primary reason why Dalio has been able to do this is because of his expertise in macroeconomics. Ray Dalio can see and prepare for economic cycles, and he now believes that he is seeing something that many Westerners don't see. Some of you may know about how China recently took down Didi from Chinese app stores. The Cyberspace Administration of China accused Didi of illegally collecting user data. We literally saw China take down the largest ride-sharing app in the country in a blink of an eye. This has led Didi's stock to fall by 35% since Didi's IPO in July. The other event that shocked many investors was when China announced that the education sector would become non-profit. This instantly tanked the shares of many Chinese education companies. TAL Education, New Oriental, and Gaotu Chidedu stock are all down over 85-95% to in the past 6 months. These two events, among others, have led investors to be fearful of China's future policies. Nonetheless, Ray Dalio sees the situation completely differently. In Dalio's perspective, he thinks that China has been increasingly capitalistic over the past few decades. The Chinese government's recent policies are just a small part of a long-term trend to maximize the well-being of its citizens. In a recent article, Dalio said, Most Western observers interpret moves like those two recent ones as the Communist Party leaders showing their true anti-capitalist stripes even though the trend over the last 40 years has clearly been so strongly toward developing a market economy with capital markets, with entrepreneurs and capitalists becoming rich. As a result, they've missed out on what's going on in China and probably will continue to miss out. Dalio's statement can be directly contrasted with Kathy Wood who recently stated that she was concerned about China's latest moves. In ARK's monthly market webinar, Kathy mentioned how she thinks the incentive for Chinese citizens to work has diminished. In essence, Kathy thinks China is moving closer to communism, whereas Dalio believes that China has and is still moving closer to capitalism. So how is it possible that Dalio thinks that China is still capitalistic despite the government's recent moves? In short, Dalio thinks that China is simply making moves to benefit the well-being of its country. Dalio stated that in this case, the policymakers signaled to Didi that it might not be best to go ahead with the listing, and they understandably want to deal with the data privacy issue. In the case of educational tutoring companies, they want to reduce the educational inequality and the financial burden on those who are desperate to have their children have these services but can't afford them by making them broadly available. They believe that these things are better for the country even if the shareholders don't like it. Dalio is clearly taking a totally different stance on the situation than most investors, but his reasoning definitely makes sense. In fact, China's latest move to alleviate gaming addictions amongst children was also done for the well-being of Chinese citizens. After all, why would the Chinese government destroy the future of their economy and discourage innovation? 
Despite our speculation, the reasoning behind China's new policies is unclear. Chinese policymakers aren't sharing why they're doing what they're doing. Nevertheless, Dalio knows that this isn't the first time that our current situation has changed. In fact, he remembers several situations where the reactions to China's moves are misinterpreted. For example, in 2015, retail investors flooded into the Chinese market, with more than 30 million new accounts opened in the first 5 months of 2015. When this Chinese retail investing bubble popped, the Chinese government had to buy stocks and manipulate the market. In hindsight, Dalio knows that this was done in order to save the capital markets. Dalio also recalls when the Chinese yuan plunged in 2016, and the People's Bank of China had to widen the currency ban for the Chinese yuan. A currency ban is when a country sets price limits for how much a currency can fluctuate. In 2016, China widened its currency ban to help its capital markets. During this time, investors pointed to this as evidence of policymakers turning away from capitalism. However, Dalio thinks that it was actually a move showing more confidence in a capitalistic system. Dalio said that through it all, Chinese policymakers successfully managed to fall out and pursued their goals, i.e., the direction of their actions never changed. It has been in support of a fast and steady development of capital markets, entrepreneurship, and openness to investment to foreign investors. So I encourage you to look at the trends and not misunderstand and overfocus on the wiggles. In order for investors to see what's going on, Dalio thinks that we must understand that Chinese policymakers have a goal of acting in the interest of Chinese citizens. Capitalists and investors in China's capital markets are subordinate to this goal, as we saw in China's latest moves. Dalio then went on to say that those in capital markets and capitalists need to not mistake their having riches for having power for determining how things will go. Dalio was clearly taking a stab at Jack Ma, who mistakenly thought that his riches would bring him power. If you haven't heard of what happened, shortly after speaking against the government, Jack Ma disappeared from the public's eye for months. In Dalio's perspective, this was obviously a horrible move by Ma. Warren Buffett's right-hand man, Charlie Munger, also took a similar stance as Dalio. I think Jack Ma was very arrogant to be telling the Chinese government how dumb they were and how stupid their policies were and so forth. Considering their system, that is not what he should have been doing. Dalio's reasoning is overwhelmingly positive for Chinese stocks, but he does recognize that there are risks in China. The geopolitical environment is changing, and this is leading to major changes. First of all, the SEC is changing policies surrounding Chinese companies on the US stock exchange. Most notably, the SEC has temporarily prohibited Chinese companies from going public. The second change is a recent threat by the US government to prohibit pension funds from investing in Chinese stocks. Dalio believes that we should assume such things will happen in the future and invest accordingly. But don't misinterpret these wiggles as changes in trends. And don't expect this Chinese state-run capitalism to be exactly like Western capitalism. As I covered earlier, Dalio uses a pure alpha strategy where he invests in counteracting investments. In order to increase investment returns while reducing overall risk, he believes diversifying into China is vital for every investor's portfolio. Ray Dalio's overall message can be summed up into two sentences. The recent moves by China are simply part of a long-term trend, which is that China is fostering an increasingly capitalistic environment. Therefore, Westerners like Kathy Witt shouldn't be scared of lowered innovation, as that isn't in line with the goals of the Chinese government. With that being said, I'm excited to announce that my research platform is officially available for the month of August. My platform includes my main portfolio, my real $25,000 model portfolio, my watch list, research reports, personally written articles, valuation models, and much more. If you're interested or if you're just curious, check out my Patreon in the first link down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.